So norepinephrine, just like uh, dopamine, right, has brain stem sources uh, where the you know nuclei, where the cell bodies of the noradrenergic neurons are actually localized. Um, in fact, there's a very prominent um, brain stem nucleus that's called the locus ceruleus, and it means the blue spot, right? The cerulean locus, um, and the uh, projections of the noradrenergic neurons from the locus ceruleus in the brainstem extend very widely all around the brain, including to many areas of uh, cortex. Um, and what's fascinating about the locus ceruleus neurons, first of all, there aren't that many of them. There are quite a, just a few, actually, on the left and right side. We're talking on the order of thousands, as opposed, you know, and you're talking about, about a brain that even in the adult has about 86 billion neurons. So there aren't really that many of these cells, but they're actually rather remarkable cells because, um, you know, here we've got a typical neuron, right? Um, and, you know, it's got the axon hillock right here. Here's the cell body. We've got the dendrites here. Let's say you depolarize to the threshold for an action potential here. You hit you know, minus 55 millivolts, and you swing open all those voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels, and you start this wave, right, of depolarization, repolarization, the action potential working its way down, you know, towards the terminals. In noradrenergic neurons, you know, neurons whose primary neurotransmitter is norepinephrine, they actually have these interesting swellings all along the axons. Um, and at each of these swellings, you know, off the cell body. So just, you know, off the axon here, it'll swell here, like the membrane will get bigger and then come back bigger and then come back. There's vesicles. There are voltage-gated calcium channels. Uh, there are, you know, vesicular transporters to pack norepinephrine inside. There's the docking complex to allow for, you know, exocytosis and release of neurotransmitters. So you actually have all the release machinery for norepinephrine at multiple places all the way along the axon, including all the way at you know the, the ends here, the axon terminals. So there are sort of effectively functionally these axon terminals, even though they're not at the terminus, you know, all the way along these remarkable noradrenergic neurons that whose cell bodies are in the brainstem, in the locus ceruleus, and whose you know axons go extending like all over you know the brain. So when you know you get a burst of activity out of the locus ceruleus, well, you get a lot of uh, you know neurotransmitter being released at many, many, many locations along the entire length, you know, forming synaptic connections with lots of different places. So even though there are fewer cells, they have many, many, many synaptic connections. And there's something, and I apologize in advance. Oh, that's not very good. Bam. <laughs> called the startle response. If something unexpected, novel, unusual occurs, well, you know, you're going to get a burst of activity out of the locus ceruleus, and it typically provokes like an external kind of orienting response. You like look, you know, to, to wherever that just occurred, for example. Um, so the norepinephrine's a neurotransmitter that's you know, activated, you know, the, or the locus ceruleus is activated by novel external stimuli, startle, orienting, and gets you externally kind of focused. Um, it's involved in, you know, listening feeding behavior. It's, um, you know, involved in arousal, uh, particularly to things that are external to yourself. Mm -hmm.